everyone, and welcome to the AEC webinar sponsored by CloudAccess.net. AEC is a comprehensive membership and subscription system for Joomla. And today you're going to basically be given a high-level overview of AEC and its functionality. And you'll also have a chance to post questions to your host, David. And let me tell you a little bit about David Deutsch from Valanx.org. He is the founder of Valanx.org, and he uh, provides software and services to the Joomla community and has been doing so for about seven years. He also offers a high level of quality client support, and the AEC extension uh, is really uh, a very popular one, comes highly, highly recommended by a lot of folks, and we're really excited to do a webinar with David. David's from Germany, and I, my name is Ryan Bernstein. My friends call me Bernie, and I am in uh, the United States in Michigan. And I'm from cloudaccess.net. Just give you a quick introduction to our company if you're unfamiliar. We are the host of the demo trial of Joomla at demo.joomla.org, and Joomla chose us to be that exclusive host because our entire company is set up for Joomla. It's the only content management system we work with, and everyone here is very knowledgeable with it. Now you can launch unlimited demo trials of Joomla through our platform every month and each of those trials is active for 30 days. You can upgrade to a paid hosting package at any time um, and experience our quality support. Give us a call. We can help you with your Joomla site. I do want to remind you that I am recording this webinar today. It's going to be available later today at youtube.com forward slash cloud access. I'll show you our YouTube channel a little bit later on towards the end of the webinar, but please do this right now. Locate that GoToMeeting slide-out uh, panel. And you can post a question there if you want to say hello and good morning. Let me know where you're attending from. We kind of always like to know where people are attending from throughout the world. Uh, David's really going to give you just a, an introduction and then wants to take your question. So, hey, David, are you there? Hey, I'm here. How are you today? Oh, I'm good, good. Spend good. most of the night coding, as I said before, and uh, so I, I hope I have my thoughts together for this. <laughs> well, good, good. I'm sure, I'm sure you're going to do great. Uh, we have over nine, 93 people registered for today's webinar. Christian mm -hmm. says hello from Romania. Paul says, "OMG, bam, webinar on Monday." <laughs> and, and JP is attending from South Africa. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and pass the presentation over to you now. Torkil says, working? yeah, it's working. We can see your seat screen. Torkil says, greetings from Norway. And, oh, right. He, he just told me you would sign on. <laughs> oh, cool. And Andy is from Tasmania. So, David, yeah, we've got your screen. Why don't you go ahead and give your overview, and we can uh, answer some questions for you. All right, so I will, as Bernie said, just give a very quick intro. We had a short discussion before. I don't have the, as much time as we had allocated before, um, so I will try to give you all the basics in about 15 minutes so that you are ready to ask questions and also ready to get the basic functionality working in AEC. Um, so a bit about AEC, it's um, a membership manager and the main focus is to give administrators a lot of functionality about how those memberships work. So um, I will, I have already set, set up a, a Joomla right here, standard Joomla 2.5, nothing on it. Um, I've already installed AEC, we uh, have decided to skip that for now. And um, as you see in this screen, this is the upcoming um, central screen that gives you a little bit of an idea how the software is structured. Um, there are a couple of concepts that you have to really get down, and so I'll try to lay those out here. Um, I said the upcoming because I'm, I'm still finishing the, the packaging for this one but um, you will be able to get this version either through our support if you, if you just find a ticket for us to say I want the latest one um, or just wait a week or two until I have it packaged up. Um, so, starting off, the main concept in AC is payment plans. So, um, you see this one right here. 
it's um, basically a blueprint to have your subscriptions for your members. And those terms, payment plan, subscription, and membership, they are a little bit booked together, but I will try to um, keep them apart for you. I will just set up a new one right now. Let's call it Silver Membership. Oops. And as you see here, there are, there are a couple of options that you have. Um, I will just explain the one we need for now. Um, so right here, we have the costs. We will make it 10 bucks for now. And we will have it last for weeks. Um, down here, you see a little bit extra functionality where you can put the users into a, a user group. And um, that's basically everything you need for a very quick setup. You can also present the plan description. Um, right now. Um, there's also some email description that's not interesting right now. And we'll stop this right here. Um, so that's our first move. Just to um, a little bit of uh, extra stuff, we also make a gold membership that's really expensive. And we will make it gold member. So now we have our first two membership plans. But we have a problem right now. Um, these are paid plans and nobody can pay for them. We actually get a couple of notifications up that says us, hey, wait, you set up a plan, but there is no payment process for it. So people, even if they try to pay for it, they couldn't. So what we do next is set a payment process up. We can do it either from the menu here, or there is the next step that you see here. It's the same button, basically. Um, for now, we will just add a standard paper. Don't have to put in much details for now. So you see that here. Um, like any other software, you can put in your business ID, and there are a couple of settings for um, fake currency, and um, yeah, also not interesting right now. So we've set up the processor. Um, we will attach that processor to our memberships. Right up here. So this one, so you, you can already see um, these are not really global setups. Um, you kind of have to put them into the, into the memberships yourself. I think this is actually on a slightly outdated version now that I see it, <laughs> um, because in the newest version you can do that from the from the processor window. But um, you could, for example, set up different payment services for different memberships. You can even, if you want to, um, tell it to override your settings for the processor here. Um, so in, in that case, you will see the same settings that we had in the processor before right in here. Um, but we don't need that right now. Um, all right, so we have the two membership set up. What we want to do now is have people buy them. So usually, this is the front end of the demo side, usually what you want to do is wrap around the user registration. And you can do that in AAC if you go to the settings it's here. Um, you have a setting up here that says require subscription and we want to do that because on this demo we want everybody who logs in to definitely require a subscription for them. Um, you can also make them make them optional if you want to. Um, so that option is there as well, but we'll do that here. And what we also want to do is integrate the, the registration. So that tells AEC to wrap around the um, digital registration. And it also works for community builder and social team. So um, we'll also set it to plans first. So we'll show the membership selection before the registration form. And this should be about it. So let's see, it should actually... Oh. All right, small plan. Oh, we don't have them visible yet. So you can also make them invisible. Um, there's the usual publish, whether the 
membership is available at all, and there's visible whether it shows up in the in the list that you just saw. Um, you can, for example, make hidden membership plans with this, where you get you see this here. This is a direct front end link. Um, this is a link that if you give it to the user, they get linked directly to the plan. If you have it plans first, they will automatically select that and then go to the registration. Um, so users could still buy this plan even if it was if it wasn't visible. And you can even check. You can even link to a specific payment process if you want to right here in the processor settings. So now they should be visible, I hope. All right. Now you see our two memberships here, silver and gold memberships. And we want to go high class, go with the gold membership. Just call this just you uh just you uh Alright, that is this one. And what has happened now is that we are we were at the Joomla registration, so everything if you if you have template overrides, anything that is all in there, and we can now redirect back to AEC. We have our confirmation screen where we repeat the user details, the selection, and the price. Um, so this is, um, you can also show buttons here um, that people can change either the user details or the selection if you want to. I've um, switched that off for now because it's a little more, sh a little more simple. But we want to buy this, so we continue. And um, this is now the checkout screen. And the checkout button won't work for now because there is no PayPal account um, attached to that, but we will get back to this later. But as you see, it repeats the membership. It also gives an overview of the terms, so the duration, the cost. If you were to set up stuff like taxes or extra functionality, this will show up as, here, as well here. You can also offer coupons, coupon codes to your clients, and they can apply them here. I, will, I might do a little, depending on the time, a little... Um, extra on coupons, but we'll see. So usually the user would now press checkout. The user account is already created, but it's um, since we have it set to require a subscription, the user can't log in right now. So let me show you this real quickly. We will log in with our test user. And whoop. so this on the one hand, it shows us um, the user is not confirmed in Joomla yet, so that's a different one. But this is from AEC, so it tells the user, hey, you have a account, but you haven't paid for it yet. So there's a link down here where you can go to the checkout page again, or you can set up a, a new invoice. But um, So even if the user, for whatever reason, um, logs out of the checkout area, or if they don't have a, a valid membership, um, they can always try to log in. Um, AEC will block them from logging in, but will offer them a chance to, for example, pay for an existing invoice or refresh their memberships. So if you if click this link now, we get to the set checkout pages before. And only available for this one user, so it sets a temporary access. Um, back to our um, administration, we now see the user. Um, the members, but we can click on not subscribed. Oops. And here he shows up. Um, this is the user info screen. So on this screen you see all the memberships they have, the invoices that they have. Um, just one by now, but the one we just created for a thousand dollars, which is actually quite pricey. Um, you see the um, the user profile up here, and you can also link to the. Uh, you can also go to the Joomla profile, or the CD or Trump social profile if you have that set up, but we don't so it's not there yet. Um, you can also assign them to membership if you want to, and um, I will show you that next. Once they have a membership, you can also modify that. Um, but before I do that, I will show you the neatest feature of AC. That's the button down here, the micro integrations. So, in AEC, membership is something very simple. Basically, what you just saw there. 
the um, the user group settings actually the only um, exotic feature about that, but apart from that, it's really just an entry in a database. What you normally want to do is attach extra functionality to the membership, and that's what you do with micro durations. Um, I will add a new one here. Um, there are quite a lot of integrations. This is why there's such a menu right here. Um, but what are micro durations? They are basically just bits of um, code that you can attach to your memberships. They can be something simple like sending an email, um, setting an entry in a database, but more commonly they are used to influence a user account in some other components. So for example, we can go to, um, to the forums and um, you see we have a couple of integrations for, um, for forums. Um, let's say we want to do something in NinjaBot. Um, I will just save this real quickly. So this is just, we have now selected, we want to do something with NinjaBot at some point. Um, in this instance, we won't see much because um, I haven't set up NinjaBot, which I should have done. Um, but usually what you see, what you see here is um, different groups in NinjaBot. So there are access groups in there you can set up um, what forums the user can access or cannot access. And um, this is what you will set in here. So for example, we will say NinjaBot silver user group. And we just have to pretend that this is what would have happened. Um, so we will save that right now. And you see we now have in basically a um, little package of action that we can later be used. We will also make a copy of that because we also want to have, for example, a gold user group. And you could use that, um, for example, if you have different support, levels, if you offer support in a forum, you could um, make different levels of support in different, different sub-forums there. So we have those two. And maybe we want to do something a little more typical. We want to send an email before the user expires. Um, we will do that communication as well, email, and send an email. This one is actually better because we will see the functionality. So we should have used that right away. Um, we see the email stuff here. Um, usually what you want to do is send an email to the user, but you have all the, you can send to whoever you want to. Um, there's small, well, this is a little bit more in depth, but I should show that as well. Down here you have um, the rewrite engine is called. So let's just say search and replace thing, we will copy the this here, this is the email, because we want the user to receive the email. And we will send it from our own just come um, we're gonna test. So we'll set up one email. It's called welcome to your membership. And there so this is the first one. But what we also want to do is send an email before they expire. So we have one here, and we we'll say ship is about to expire. And if you go to the first tab here, you see a little thing down here. It gives you the option to send it, let's say, seven days before the expiration. So we have this action, we have the other action. Uh, we could also send one on expiration if we want to. I will skip that for now. But you get the basic idea. So you have the option to, to send an email. Um, right in here, this is actually something that's also in the parent process, but not yet. But you will see that you can attach it to somewhere. Because we want to use it on every membership, we will just attach it to those two groups. And um, in the silver membership, we want it to attach to the this one. You can also do it on the other way. So we'll go to the gold membership. And in here is also a tab for micro versions. You see the email is already, um, already selected in here. But uh, we also want to have the for a membership assigned there. Say that. And um, let me check very quick whether something. 
Um, so I wanted to make it fine. Lines, light migrations. I should have something that will actually show up somewhere. Um, where we can do some debugging stuff. Yeah, we'll make an entry so you can see that it's actually working. I will set up this one and I will make an action. Uh, um, let's put the user name in there. Copy. Just, uh, whoop, whoop, whoop. And I will just attach that to the plans as well. I will show you in a minute what, what that does. Um, next thing we will do is go back to our user because we um, normally the user would have to pay the checkout button here, but we actually going to skip that because we have my account set up. We will act as though the payment happened, and this goes um, to this button. So um, you can either give a link to the user if you want to. You can cancel an invoice. Or you can apply the plan right away. Why are those not disappearing? Um, we will now act as though the user had paid. So we will set a clear and apply plan. I guess we will also activate the user. Otherwise, this is no fun at all. So what you see now is the user has his first subscription. This is the entry right here. There's an ID. There's a plan, this is the gold membership that we just set up, and it has an expiration date. This is also in, in four weeks, so it's the July 29th. Um, here is, as I said before, the option to reset the expiration if you want to, but the user has to have one uh, in the first place. Um, and so down here is the option to have different memberships at the same time. I will go into that in a, in a minute, but only really quickly. And you see the invoice over here with a payment date that has just happened. And we should also, let's see. So what you see here is that um, a plan has been assigned. Usually the, for example, paper would call us up and tell us, hey, the payment has arrived and everything would happen automatically or we have just um, skip that and press the button ourselves, but this has already triggered certain actions. For example, the, um, the email that we've just set up um, and somebody at test.test.com uh, test at test.com has also gotten an email right now, but um, this is this was happened. And what would also have happened is that the, the forum membership had, um, was assigned. Um, to very quick things that I wanted to show you as well, right towards the end, is um, plans basically always live in a root group. That's what you see here. So this is a group. These are not user groups. They are just um, containers for your plans. So this is the, the root one. And um, as I have shown you before, um, I attach, for example, the email MI to um, let's edit this right now. I've attached this to those two memberships. I could have also taken that out, um, save that, and set the root groups to be email. If I do that, every plan I ever set up will have this um, functionality, and I can make subgroups for that, obviously, and you can then put those plans in those groups, and they will inherit those micro integrations. So um, that's a very nice way to. Um, get system-wide functionality, for example, like those expiration emails that you want everybody to um, everybody to receive there. Um, and the other quick thing I wanted to also show you is restrictions. Um, if we, for example, have our gold membership right here, uh, maybe we want to only show the gold membership to certain users. Um, you can use that for hierarchical setups. Um, that's something you can do with um, restrictions. You go to the gold membership, and you have the restrictions tab, and you have a couple of options there to um, set up who can see this payment plan. 
Um, in this case, what I want to do is um, I only want gold members to see the gold membership, which is kind of, um, there's no really use in that, but anyway, um, we will say require to have a gold membership. Save that. And if you go to the front end now, the gold membership won't show up anymore. And we will go straight to the registration. That's another feature there. It's not a bug. <laughs> um, because what it does is it picks whether there are multiple options that it has to choose from. And if there's no option to choose from, um, it would just skip right to the um, right to the registration screen. You can also um, um, there's supposed to be a feature there. Mm -hmm. um, so the feature here calls show X decisions. So let me just show this one. Um, the idea is that you only show stuff to the user when the user has to do something. For for the benefit of showing what it does here, I was switch it on. So in this case, we only show the silver membership. But what we can also do is now log in with our test user, and he or she, if he or she is on the subscriber screen, will also now see the gold membership because um, this user has a gold membership. Let me set that up in a restriction. There are a couple of things. Um, restrictions happen on a couple of levels. So, for example, you can even tell a... Um, um, where was I? You can um, set a coupon to have a certain, certain restriction, so only certain members can use a coupon. Um, what do I want to try? 25 minutes. Okay, I will also do coupons really quickly. Add a new coupon, and in here you will see the same stuff. Um, with a with an added benefit that you can also to only apply to certain plans. So if you want a coupon that only works for gold memberships, you can do so right here. Um, and you have the usual options. You can set an, a discount amount and um, or a discount percentage if you want to. And there are restrictions for when this will work and um, whether we will use go for one item or for multiple items and what have you. Just save this right now. Anyway, we don't need it. And yeah, that's about it. So to just quickly recap, um, today see you have payment plans. Those payment plans can be paid for um, by an invoice. The invoice can be put to a payment processor. If that is successful, a transaction will happen and that will create a membership. We have done so with our test user. Um, Pay for a gold membership, um, and they ended up there. And um, the functionality of micro integration can plug into payment plans or plan groups um, and give more functionality to those. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. 27 minutes. That was quick. Yeah, really good. It's really comprehensive. You know, have, have, yeah. never, have never used it before. Um, kind of really interesting how comprehensive it was. Uh, we, do, we did have a couple questions posted during the webinar. So, folks, if you, if you have a question for David, please post that now. I've got a few for you. Um, as I was watching, just took a few notes. Um, number one is when are you going to be ready for 3.5, uh, 3.2, 3 or what's your plans? <laughs> um, the, the I've published an, a release candidate like two or three months ago, and that already works with 3.0. So I just set up a, a 2.5 here um, because that's still the most useful. But you, it, we have an internal version basically that already works for 3.0. Okay, cool. So any, it, it's just the same. Same views, same functionality in 3.0. Right, and um, it also works across all platforms, so 1.5 um, through, through 3.0 if you need that. Cool. Uh, number two is um, a, a little bit more about micro integrations. You um, showed NinjaBoard, uh, which right. is a forum, correct? Mm -hmm. what, right. are, what are some other common uses of the micro integrations? What else do people... Um, what are the components 
Are you compatible with? Yeah. Um, well, as I said, there are eighty of them, so I can just go. I would just go through all of them and highlight a couple of them. Yeah. So there are other forums. Um, there's also stuff that is um, surprisingly often used is writing an htaccess file. So if you want to um, restrict a folder on your server, you can basically have ac pull the user password and set a, a, a folder restriction there. So that's kind of the micro micro functionality. As I said, you can you can uh, make an SQL query if you have um, if you want to track data in the database. There are mailing lists like um, AC mailing. Um, if you want to register a user, um, we, for example, on, on Valangs use uh, MailChimp, which is also supported. So you can give the user an option during registration to click I want to subscribe to your new setup, and they will automatically be subscribed there. GenUse is another one. Um, tracking, like Google AdSense. Um, what's the other one? I forgot. Um, oh, right, let me just check. Other e-commerce, no, tracking, affiliate tracking, right. So for example, Riot F Affiliate is a pretty um, popular one, Affiliate Pro is another one, um, but also analytics like Google Analytics, if you want to track sales in there, you can do so. Um, go back to all, some download components like Dogman, um, iProperty is kind of popular right now, so you can, um, that's a, a, a property listing component, and you can set up agents or companies in there and um, restrict how many properties users can list. Um, there are some functionality crossed over to other shop components like Red Shop or Virtual Mart. So you can in Virtual Mart you always have a separate user account, and you can within your Gmail registration set up a, a Virtual Mart account if you want to. Um, and then let me highlight another uh, last one. That's the what is it? Um, go by vendor. Show me ours. Um, there is the text. Where is it? The text helper. Me. And that's just um, setting up different um, attacks, right? So you have, for example, you can set up locations in there. Um, if you're in Europe, there is an automatic VAT mode, so you can have an automatic select box from which country the user is, and um, you can set a VAT percentage or use the one that is already um, pre predetermined in AAC. And you can also attach that to your payment plan, so that just basically handles all the, um, the taxes for you. Yeah, that's, I think, wow. that's it for a nice. <laughs> yeah, you, well, I, how, many, how many integrations have you developed for it? I think there are now 82, wow. something over 80. And this, the same goes for, um, for payment processors. So for payment processors, we also have like 80 or 90 right now. So the, the most popular ones are obviously PayPal wow. and Authorized Net. <coughs> yeah. um, but we also have a couple of local ones like EPS or ePay. IAD is pretty popular in, in, in the Netherlands, like Wally as well. Um, yeah. Very cool. Very neat. So, you know what, one big question I had is if you went back to the front end, when you first um, logged in or you created an account, we got that red error. We, so you, you signed up a, a, a membership and we got the uh, mm -hmm. warning that um, the, uh, I, I forget which, which error message you got, but um, right. <laughs> it seems that, like it poses an issue if it's not, um, Right. How, do we, how do we make sure? Um, and that's yeah. Go ahead. Right. So <laughs> this is a, another one of the user features right here in the membership. So you can do um, override activation in that case, um, which is it's logical. If you if you have a user who pays money, you don't need to verify the email. In most cases, for example, have their PayPal email, account. and even if they put in a bogus email, you will still get to them. So you can override the activation right here, and it will automatically set them once they are registered. And um, there's also a um, an option here to skip the registration email if you want to completely customize that, but that takes care of the error message so far. Yeah. And save. Got it. So we just do the override activation, and mm -hmm. we're all set. And the, is the is the user linked, or then, or does the user just the 
primary manager become the component? Uh, what do you mean by that? So uh, is it a linked, is the user linked somehow with the user manager in Core Joomla? Uh, yeah, you can go in here and then you can go profile right away and then you end up here. I see. Got it. It is linked. Very good. So a couple questions came in from a few users. I want to get to one by Jim right away. Jim wrote, sorry, I had to join late. Has the seminar been recording for viewing later? Yes, it has. That's at youtube.com forward slash cloud access. I will show you exactly where to access it um, later today, Jim. Um, let's get to a question from Paul. Paul posted a question. Let's see a new user sign up and gain access. I believe David illustrated that. Another question from Paul. Okay. Um, Ad, please explain if users can have profile pages like in Jam Social. Is there any way? I, I, ah. I met. I saw that you can integrate with Jam Social. Is there any yeah. way to view view the profile? Um, I will show you one thing really quickly because there is a kind of profile in AEC itself. Um, it's not a use a profile per se, but you can make it that. Let me just put in a, a link to AC. Um, whoop, so you have the user options here. We will make a subscription details link. So call it in my subscription. Save. So I just logged in with the uh, test user down here. I can go to my subscription. And you see the membership here. So this is the very basic one. Um, what you can also do is um, set up extra details for the user that show up on registration. And you can also have them show up in this page. What you can't do is have any social features, so they stay in AEC. Um, and that's kind of the limit right there. But um, they can show you the, the integration that um, is used for that. Um, go to our stuff. Uh, that. So the custom user details, if you want to, I'll just save that. And you can set up like two custom settings in here. Oops, apply. And these are you could put in input fields in there, names in there. But as I said before, those only generate user details in AC. Um, I think there are plugins by other people to show AEC details in, for example, the Zoom, Zoom social login screen. And what you can also do is um, reuse the data that you collect with the custom user details and write that to a profile, for example, in Zoom social. But the, um, since AEC is not really about um, user profiles, we kind of try to stay out of that. There is functionality, so the, the bottom line is this. There is functionality to collect user details and to collect any other information for the user account and for individual subscriptions. But the actual question is, what do you want to do with that data? And we have some some ways to um, reuse that in um, in Java Social and other components. But um, yeah, the option is there, but it's it's the the I guess the answer is complicated. <laughs> but um, there are options there, and I, I guess if you have a if you have a special question for that. For example, if you say, I have this and this set up and I want to do that. I have a sales request form on my site, on Vikes.org, and you can send an email that goes straight to me and just explain what you want to achieve with AC and I can help you out with that. Yeah, really cool. You know, Paul posted that that answered his question, so that's good. Um, would, you mind, would you mind showing your, um, your support page or how, how folks can follow up with you? Right. Um, and we also talked earlier that um, I will put up a blog post um, that references um, the YouTube video. And if you want to, you can post um, questions in the comments there. So this is the, the main page. Um, I don't have a login account on this machine right now, but um, if, you, if you go down here, there is a um, oh, where is it? Yeah, sales request. Um, and um, just put it in here. It will go straight to me, and I will help you out. Cool. Uh, another question from Paul. Can you import member membership profiles from another CMS? Or he, he says he has a CSV of over 1,600 members. Oh. 
Right. You can do that. Um, the input function. I don't have a file here right now, which is kind of unfortunate. But um, what you can do here is upload a file, like this USB file that Paul has, and it will give you an option. Um, it will show you um, here are the fields I, I found, and then you can select um, create a user account from that, automatically assign membership, set the expiration date according to the user data. So it's um, there, there are certain limits because we can only do so much with your data, but if you have the data, if you have the um, expiration date, if you have the email address, if you, have, if you want to, you can have a password as well. Um, but we can also generate lots of, lots of the stuff for you. Um, we can get that into AEC. Cool. Very good. Um, let's see. All right. Jim posted, ah, I see that it is. Very good. Okay. Uh, Paul posted, oh, I think, okay. We've answered these, Paul. Can users have profile pages? Uh, we've answered it. Can the admin import a CSV of existing users from another website? We've answered that. Um, uh, I guess a question from Paul, how, you know, can you customize the registration button to be more prominent? Can uh, the users have access to that um, from the back end? Um, or is that going to be some coding? Well, the um, is you talking about the login form, right? The registration button down here, or this one? I guess this one probably, right? Um, uh, that came in towards the beginning. Uh, I would have to imagine it's in the component itself and not core Joomla. Like, do they well, have? I guess they. Do they have skins? Do they have any options for? Um, there, there are templates in here, but um, I think mostly what you want to do there is use template overrides, which you can also do. Um, there are a couple of options. You go to the templates. Um, this is the main template. There are no other templates right now. But um, you can check. Do you have that? Oh, no, that was actually in the, in the processor. Um, so, for example, people don't want to have the paper logo right there. Um, so you can um, you can set it to have a, a generic button, and that will there we go. that will just switch it to show only by now. And you can also customize that with with your CSS or with the template override. Um, yeah, I guess the answer to that is you will probably need template overrides if you want to get really fancy. But um, we support the standard Joomla way of of overriding stuff with template overrides. Okay. Yeah, Paul's commenting that he would like to have a nice big, a nice big call to action. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, and um, the the other thing that that goes with that is um, yeah. Yeah, he would uh, like a nice. Um, he would like to change the button color or any of that. But those options that you. Yeah, you you probably want to do that in your CSS, I okay. guess, because um, yep. if if I want to. Um, offer options for that. I, I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't be able to stop offering options. So I kind of try to keep that that region there. Sure, got it. Well, you know what? No other questions at this point. Um, uh, that's that's actually perfect because I'm running out of time. <laughs> actually, actually, we just got one more from Nichelle. Can we can we have one okay. more? Sure. Are there administrative reports? It's a really good question. Are there re yeah. reporting? Um. There are two reports. Obviously, I, I can't show any stats right now because there are, there's just one sale, and that that was just a simulated one. What you have here, usually, uh, I can actually show you a screenshot. This is what you would usually see. If that is a basic um, daily statistics comparisons and um, a sales graph you can manipulate. Um, that's just for sort of getting a fancy overview. Um, but what we also have is um, go to the reporting. Um, no, wait, that's actually in the toolbox. Um, for example, I use um, I we use AEC obviously ourselves, and I also use the tax feature. So there's a a reporting feature to just collect all your invoices for one month and um, print out all the taxes that were collected there. Um, another one that just um, I think it's called mini report, and that just does the same. Actually, actually should I show something? Yeah. <laughs> so you see, it's, it's nothing much in there, but 
you see um, a, a, a basic list of um, of sales for what for today's one with this one. Um, that's the second one, and the in the last one is that you can also export your sales. Um, and this is kind of the import. You can you can make CSV files, XML or yes, JSON files. You can select a range, select um, only by one processor, or certain payment plans, and um, you can collate your data if you want to. But that's basically if you if you want to um, plug that into your um, well into your what's it called. Um, <laughs> If you want to somehow process your sales data for your business, you you have multiple ways to get get it out there. Okay. Yeah. Great. Um, so yeah. So that was the last question. Um, since we talked about that before, um, since I'm short on time today, um, we have decided to, um, if if you're okay with that, and if Cloud Access is okay with that, um, kind of an, have an advanced session, maybe in in two or three weeks. Um, we can collect the comments on the blog post and maybe on YouTube as well, so we can go over those and give some more details on, on the finer points of AC there. Yeah, absolutely. It'd be fun to see it um, in a developed site um, right. to see and you know, create those reports. And uh, those reports, that looked really, really, um, those look great, great too. So Yeah, I, w I would love to show because they're also kind of interactive, but my mouse does nothing here. So. Right. Yeah. Great. We well. David, uh, an excellent component. I'm going to definitely uh, recommend it much more. Thanks. And uh, if Frank has posted, yeah, David rocks. And uh, Michelle says, <laughs> thank you. Frank posted, he actually volunteered for a second webinar. Yeah, he did. He already did. I don't even have to go hunt him down for it. So that's good. <laughs> I'm going to change the presenter back to me. And David, thank you so much for coming in today. I know you're short on time. You should all be able to see my screen right now. And just a reminder that you can come to uh, valanx.org. This is V-A-L-A-N-X dot O-R-G. And come to the blog. And David's going to post something here where you can um, respond to this webinar and post additional questions. And remember, you can also scroll to the very bottom of the page and go to sales request if you want to know, you know your, a little bit more about your specific um, your specific uh, setup and if uh, AEC might work for you. Just a reminder too that this webinar is going to be posted later today at youtube.com forward slash cloud access. If you scroll down to our special webinar playlist right here, uh, it's going to be posted here at, um, in a few hours. Uh, we have really close to 5,000 subscribers on our channel and if you do subscribe you'll receive a notice, an email notice every time a new webinar is uploaded. Um, just to also let you know that um, we have a number of upcoming free webinars including a bootstrap webinar. One of uh, a developer from a Happy Dog web development company, um, Ryan, is going to come in and teach us about building a custom bootstrap template in Joomla 3. We also have Steve Burge coming in from OS Training on July 15th. He's going to teach us how to speed up our Joomla site. He's going to give us a 10-step approach to for speed. We also have Jessica Dunbar coming back from Anything Digital to talk about JCal Pro, a calendaring and collaboration uh, component for Joomla. And then Sander from, um, let's see, the Netherlands. Sander Potcher, I want to say. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. But Sander's coming in and he's going to teach us about the ACL Manager, one of the most comprehensive um, ACL management. Really helps understand the user manager, permission settings, and all that. So you're all more than welcome to come back to any of our free and live webinars in the future. David, thank you so much for helping us out today, and uh, have a good day, everybody.